what's going on everybody? It's Mike from SneakerHistory.com and I'm back with another video. And guys, it's the end of the year. It's about that time for us to start making lists. And since I'm finishing up my first year of YouTube, I thought, why not join the fun? So today we're going to look at my top 10 sneakers of 2020. And fair warning, these are not going to be the same sneakers you've been seeing on other outlets. I'm not going to fill my list up with Dunks, uh, fill it up with the you know, Jordan 1 Dior. These are going to be things that I like, some things I was able to get, some things I wasn't. But I really want to encourage you guys that when a video is finished to go ahead and drop me your top 10 in the comments. I want to talk about it. I want to see how we're the same, see how we differ. But while you're down there leaving that comment, please make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that stuff to help me keep growing this channel, keep bringing out content to you guys because I look forward to doing a lot more in the coming years. Now, with that, we're going to jump right into our list. And number 10 is actually going to be the Nike Space Hippie Pack. Now, I wasn't personally able to get a pair of this sneaker, but I think the entire pack was actually really, you know, creative. They were, you know, trying to take a step in sustainability as a brand, and they took, you know, things, scraps, you know, waste from the, the factory floor and created new sneakers. Now, of course, the pack consisted of four sneakers, you know, the model 01, 02, 03, and 04. And, you know, for the most part, they were all done well. Now, my only gripe about the sneaker itself is that the 04 didn't have the same cushioning from what I've understood, so it wasn't as comfortable to maybe walk around all day. But overall, the aesthetics of the sneaker I think were really cool. And after initial, you know, instant sellout to the sneaker, the, the shoes become pretty readily available, at least in some of the models. So I know the 04 you can find on store shelves right now, and I, I think maybe some of the others if you look around, but it's really cool that it started something kind of tough to get, but the brand actually kept putting them out so people who want them can actually get them. Now, number nine on our list is going to be the Adidas Ultra 4D. Now, this sneaker, I probably should have it higher in the list, but I'm just, I'm not the biggest 4D fan. I like it, I have a pair, I, you know, I, I respect what it is, but it's just not super comfortable. But the fact that they were able to take an Ultra Boost 1.0 upper, pair with the 4D bottom, the shoe just looks amazing. Uh, I haven't been able to get my hands on a pair just yet. Um, I'm honestly, I'm waiting for them to go down in price because I think they're $200 plus. And I mean, but overall, it's a good shoe. I think it might be just $200 actually. Yeah. But regardless, a good looking shoe. Um, I wish they would have taken that step with the initial 4D releases. I think they would have maybe caught traction a bit more, but it just makes sense. Take one of your most popular shoes ever, take the upper, then put your new innovative cushioning system. I mean, you just kind of had a match made in heaven. Now, my, I guess, few favorites of that model were gonna be the chalk, which is, I mean, you can never go wrong with that cell chalk colorway. Um, you also had the green tea time from SNS, if I'm not mistaken, and then the social status colorway that popped up not too long ago. It had like the, I think it's color blocked in three different like orange, green, and yellowish. I'll put pictures of it up here, that way you guys to see it because clearly I don't have those available. But really cool shoe. I hope to see more of it because again, I, I really love the Ultra Boost 1.0. It's one of my favorite sneakers and to see them doing more with it, hey, I'm, I'm here for it. Now, number eight is actually gonna be a shoe that I was able to get my hands on. I mean, a little late, but hey, better late than never sometimes. And that's going to be the Yeezy Quantum. Um, there we go. Now, the Yeezy Quantum actually released in February during All-Star Weekend. And I know we all remember seeing the videos of the, the Sherpas going through downtown Chicago and handing out the sneaker to the crowds and crowds of people following. Um, I mean, I think they're giving out for free, if I'm not mistaken. You had a, some some people out there actually trading their shoes on their feet for it, which, um, I mean, I guess they got them back when it was all said and done, but it just shows how much of an impact this sneaker had, how long people have been waiting for it, because we know that Kanye kept talking about wanting to produce a basketball shoe that was playable for Adidas, and he actually did. Now, there are two models of the sneaker. You have the Quantum and then the Basketball. Uh, the basketball just has more cushioning, certain panels to, I guess, make it more comfortable for basketball. But uh, both come with the, I guess, the performance label on the box. You can see here the box is actually behind me. Uh, so, you know, with the feel of the shoe, I'm assuming you can probably hoop in both of them. But I, I just really like it. I've been waiting for it since I saw spy shots of it. Since we saw Yeezy post that one picture of this crazy 3M sneaker that got, you know, initially banned from the NBA because it was just too bright. So I'm really glad to have this one because I was actually at All-Star Weekend, but 
I think I just wasn't around the same area where, you know, the trucks were and I really didn't want to run around in negative degree weather and in the snow with all the people. So I think I, I'd rather have gotten them later than have to go through that. So um, this is my number eight pick of 2020. Now, number seven is another shoe I actually wasn't able to get my hands on, but it came out recently to just kind of rave reviews. And the sneaker comes out pretty often, but the brand finally got it right. And the sneaker we're talking about, I'll put the picture here, is the Nike Air Max 3 Radiant Red, or to what most people know it as, the Air Max 90 Infrared. Now, Nike took a really um, just great stance to that sneaker this year. They initially, it was a really big push for it. Um, it's the 20th anniversary of that sneaker. And, oh no, I'm so sorry, the 30th anniversary. I can't do math apparently. The 30th anniversary of that sneaker. And they started with some you know, different original colorways where they were recrafting and giving the original shape, giving the original box. But when it came to the Air Max 3, which they renamed it when it came to the Radiant Red or Infrared colorway, they actually took it and recrafted it even more to include four foot air. So I really like the thoughtfulness behind the sneaker. It's a great looking shoe to begin with, but the fact that you got original shape, uh, four foot air in it, um, it's something that a lot of people really like and it's one I'm looking to get my hands on sooner or later. So um, just keep your eye out. If you haven't tried this sneaker, go ahead. I've heard nothing but good things and hopefully again, I have a pair in my possession soon. Now, number six on our list is going to be one sneaker. I had my eye on for, as soon as I saw it was releasing, I had my eye on it and I'm so glad I got it. And that's gonna be the Air Jordan 1 and the CLJP colorway. And this is gonna be the neutral gray color. Now, this sneaker released originally in 2001, first time retro and since then, uh, I guess 19 years later. And I mean, come on. This was the only Jordan 1 I actually wanted this year. I didn't go crazy for like the Royal Toes or the, I guess, Mochas, whatever, everything else that came out. This shoe, it's just, it's just different than a typical Jordan 1. And the crazy thing is, I guess, if you're really big into the resale market, the value of these, there's no real value in comparison to other things that came out. Um, which is weird to me because this is, uh, maybe just people didn't have the same history with it, which, I mean, I didn't. I didn't see this sneaker for a while. I only saw pictures of it, you know, kind of as I kept getting more and more into sneakers. But this is the first time I ever saw one in person when I actually got my hands on it. Um, but the neutral gray, like really low, low cut suede, the metallic silver leather, the, the jeweled wings logo. I mean, this shoe, I think a lot of people who kind of slept on it are going to be upset that they didn't get it because I probably at some point, like every other Jordan one does, the price skyrockets and, you know, cause one person wears it or whatnot. But I like this from the jump and I've worn it a lot. So I'm trying to make sure I don't beat it up too badly, but yeah, definitely one of my top sneakers of 2020. Now, next on our list is gonna be number five. So we're in our top five now. And the sneaker we're gonna be looking at is going to be the Puma RS Dreamer. Now, the Puma RS Dreamer is J. Cole's signature sneaker from Puma. Um, I mean, come on guys. When Puma said they're getting back into basketball, people kind of like, ooh, I don't know. They've been coming with heat. They've been, you know, every sneaker they put out has been better and better and better. They can't keep this shoe on shelves. When this sneaker came out in the, uh, the black with the multicolored panels on it, sold out instantly. The Blood, Sweat, and Tears Red, sold out. Lakers color, sold out. Cement color, sold out. This Mario color, sold out. And there's actually three iterations of the Mario with the uh, Mario 64, which I'm holding here. We have the Mario Galaxy, which is impossible to find, which is amazing looking. And then the Mario Sunshine, looks like the kind of the aqua water upper. This sneaker, I haven't got to play ball in it just yet, but it just looks amazing. Uh, it's not overpowered with branding. It's just done super well and it's probably just a clean mind soon, geez. But the Rs Dreamer, this this sneaker, Puma outdid themselves with this, and I can't wait to actually get on the court with them. Now, my number four sneaker is, again, one of those sneakers that it wasn't necessarily hard to get, maybe certain collaborations, but the New Balance 992 had to be one of the best produced sneakers of 2020, whether it be a Packer collaboration or whether it be a GR. This sneaker was put together well, I mean, this particular one is a made in the USA multicolor colorway, and New Balance is always known for 
great materials, uh, taking time with the colors they put out. So I'm really, I mean, I can't say much more about this shoe. If you haven't worn a 992, or haven't got your hands on one, try it, you will not be disappointed. All right, so to our number, our number three shoe, one of my personal all time favorites, this is gonna be the Reebok question and the Reebok question as a whole, because this has been the year of the question. Every time you look up, Reebok has put another one out and they have been working their butts off this year, putting out great, great colorways, great collaborations with, I mean, you guys seen the videos I've done. We have the James Harden colorways. We've had the Spickable Me slash Minion colorways. We've had the 25th anniversary suede toes, Eric Emanuel pink toes, and we also have the uh, yellow toes coming out and they're gonna squeak by at the end of the year. But so, I mean, come on. Like this is a timeless model. This goes up there with all time sneakers and Reebok has just done a great job. And I just, you, you, can, you can't be mad at this. You cannot be mad at this. So this is gonna be my number three sneaker of the year is gonna be the Reebok question. My number two sneaker, I hope I do not butcher this name, but this is going to be the Sele Brimberry New Balance 2002R. And please, Whew, don't kill me in the comments. I just, I did not mean to murder your name, um, but that sneaker, I got a picture up here for you. It is absolutely fantastic. I have one of my buddies who actually lives overseas who got a pair. That suede, that color, it's just, that model, everything just worked together for it. And again, it's not one of those typical things you see. Now, was it extremely hard to get? Yes. I, I. I didn't even see the drop. They were they were here and gone in an instance, but that's one of those sneakers. I mean, I love to see different brands like the New Balance, the Asics, the Reebok. You know, that's not the same quote unquote limited release that people actually went crazy for. So those are just an A1 sneaker. I hope to one day maybe get a hands on a pair of them, but for now I have to look at them from, uh, from Goat or StockX and just, you know, just admire them from afar, I guess. Now, my number one, well, actually, before we get into our number one sneaker, or sneakers, hmm, we're actually gonna talk about some honorable mentions. And first honorable mention is gonna be the Reebok Seal Legacy or the Classic Leather Legacy. It was a new model that Reebok put out this year that was an update, of course, on the Classic Leather sneaker. And it looked great, used solid materials, and didn't break the bank. If I'm not mistaken, they were 80 bucks and typically they didn't get any higher than 100 if it was a collaboration. So great shoe, hope to see that one around. They put a lot of colors out and they sold out so fast. So I hope to see more from that sneaker as the you know, time keeps going on. Next honorable mention is gonna be the Nike ISPA collection. They have took so many chances with this collection, I can't be mad at it whatsoever. Um, whether it be the Royal Warrior, that's way too expensive, more to like the um, overreact the, the flow those are just great sneakers and they don't get not all the time I guess because the, some of them have the I guess the the resale value or the hype around it but I feel like they the whole line as, as a whole doesn't get the love it deserves so really keep your eye out for the ISPA collection um, also another honorable mention is gonna be the Pharrell NMD human made now the reason I say that is because they, they went back to their original model, no more of the trail pattern, putting out colors that have been selling out left and right. Uh, I mean, it's a great sneaker. Again, one I really want to get my hands on one day. And yeah, just they've done well. They really put a, you know, put a surge energy back into that line. And it's really nice to see that because those are always nice sneakers. Now, my last honorable mention is actually going to be one Jordan 4 that I have not got my hands on because it was not a US release. And that is the Jordan 4 Shashiko. Now, they took that same, you know, pattern, well not pattern, but same concept they used with the Dunk Shashiko, the Kyrie Shashiko, and it was a denim based, it has all these crazy patterns on it. There's something different than we typically get. Like, you would think I would put the Fire Red Jordan 4, but I, every couple years we're gonna see that. And this year's release apparently had a bunch of like flawed pairs, so I wasn't really impressed by that. Great shoe as a whole, I mean, it's classic, but give me something different sometimes. And that Shashiko pair was something different and I can really appreciate. Now, what you've all been waiting for, my number one pick of 2020, and that is gonna be actually a tie between models um, because I couldn't have one without the other. I felt like they were just, they were tied together too much. And that is gonna be both the Kobe 5 Pro Tro and the Kobe 6 Pro Tro. Um, I mean, unfortunately this year we did lose Kobe Bryant and you know, it, 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 it sucks, but his legacy does still live on in his sneakers. Um, 
you know, for all of us who love the shoe, loved watching them play, it's, it's nice that we're able to go in and actually, well, I would say get them, but the the popularity the shoe has has skyrocketed because of his passing, unfortunately. But the fact that they're still putting them out, and hopefully we see a spike in numbers produced. But I mean, a Kobe Five approach, or yet the chaos. You got the Bruce Lee's that just released, Bruce Lee alternates. You have the uh, Five Rings. You had all these come out. All they were hard to get, they were just amazing to see back in stores, back online. So it's awesome to see people wearing them again. I hope more people do wear them. It's not just necessarily buy them a flip. And that's going to be the same thing with the release we got on Christmas Eve, the Kobe 6 Grinch. I can't tell you the amount of disappointment I had when I didn't hit on Sneakers app or didn't hit on any of the raffles I submitted. The Kobe 6 Grinch is an all-time classic. It goes into that like legendary sneaker status to me. It was 10 years ago, we looked at NBA on Christmas Day and saw the Black Mamba rocking these loud, scaly, just performance-driven looking sneakers. And it was, I mean, to, to be a person who sat on the floor that day who got that pair from Kobe and Nike, that, that just, that's just awesome. So I have to say the Kobe 5 and 6 are definitely, the, the Pro Tros are definitely gonna be my number one pick for 2020. And I really hope to see exactly what they keep doing with the line. Because I've been lucky enough to get a pair of the, the Pro Tro Runs, and I have a pair of the Undefeated Pro Tro Fours. Uh, so I'm lucky to say I do have a, a couple of pairs, but man, the five and sixes are two of my favorite models. So I really hope I can add those to the collection. But yeah, that's that's my list, guys. I mean, I picked sneakers that I really like, and I mean, also I did take into consideration things I see things we talk about on Sneaker History Podcast. So I'm really, you know, I don't know, really excited to see what you guys have to say. Again, love it, hate it. The beauty of sneakers is we have our own opinion. We can talk about these things. So again, drop a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me your top 10. You know, did I miss something? Because there's a lot of sneakers that released. Even though we were all locked up for COVID, there was still a ton of sneakers that seemed to have released. So let me know, guys. I love to have the interactions in the comments with you. I try to get to them as quick as I can, as many as I can. So thank you guys for even taking the time to watch the videos. Thank you for rocking with me for a year so far. I'm really excited for 2021. Um, I wouldn't be here without you guys watching and just you know supporting. So thank you so much to the entire audience. Please make sure, you know, tell your friends about it, tell your family. I'd love to have as many people watching as, the, as possible. Also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MadWatcher789. You go ahead and follow the Sneaker History Podcast. We go ahead and have a new episode every Monday and Thursday. We're back on YouTube, or we're not back, but we're on YouTube now. So look up the Sneaker History channel and, of course, SneakerHistory.com. So until next time, guys, or until 2021, see ya.